Hey, good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to uh, this session. Thank you for uh, joining in. Let's pray, and then we'll get started. I would like to request one of us here to please lead with lead in prayer. Father God, we thank you for this day, Father. We submit each one of us under loving hands, Father Lord. Uh, help us to hear it, hear it, and do it, Lord. Your word, not just the hear hearers, but the doers of your word, Father. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Neela. So, um, as far as the keys to supernatural ministry are concerned, we uh, have discussed that we need to have. We we were at the point where we were talking about faith, you know, and how important it is. Earlier, we discussed about the spiritual realm, the natural realm, and then we took uh, a good amount of time to also discuss regarding angels and that angels can intervene in our situations and circumstances. Um, and faith is where we had stopped earlier. And I was telling us that uh, in the teachings of Jesus, that's what he encouraged. Uh, he always encouraged faith in the heart of uh, um, anyone, especially those who may be in a crucial um, time, right? Like people like Martha and Mary, even at a time when the brother had died, the only thing Jesus had to tell them was, if you believe, yeah, you will see the glory of God. Because faith can pull, um, if I may put it this way, God's results into our realm. The things that God wants to do, the things that God can do, it will pull from the spiritual realm and make it manifest in the natural realm. Okay, according to his purposes, of course. Uh, but one needs to carry faith. We said that uh, faith is associated with our desire. And I was telling us in the last class that... Um, when we have faith in God regarding a matter, we will also have a strong desire. Now, desire is not only limited to our emotions, but it's a deeper sense uh, of wanting, um, you know, God to intervene. We saw the prayer of that um, Canaanite woman who went to Jesus and uh, she pleaded with him to heal her, to deliver her child. And uh, Jesus is answer was, you know, the way you desire, whatever you desire, let it be done for you. So when we talk about faith, we need to have a strong sense uh, or a strong desire for God to actually do something. Okay. Uh, if I, I also said in the last class that sometimes we just put the blame on God and we say, maybe it was not God's will, uh, you know, or, uh, uh, we pray and then, okay, if, if God wants, he will do it. We are very flexible. It's not like uh, our desire is strong enough to go after it. Okay. So that becomes a challenge. So to maintain that strong desire to uh, see the result is what is important. So just recently, uh, I was um, uh, thinking about people who fall sick and uh, you know how we minister healing to them and um, because even I've had in, in the last one week there are some people I know who have taken ill uh, and and so really like as a pastor for me that's that's very uh, it's, it burdens me that I can go about my day normally but then you know there are people who are now sick and they are taking so long to recover how how can I minister to them uh, how can I really see healing manifest uh, in their uh, bodies? So as I was thinking about this, I was also talking to somebody from my church and we were uh, discussing in uh, 2021, uh, there was that second wave of COVID. I don't know how it was for you, but um, here in Bangalore, uh, it was pretty bad. Uh, and at that time, you know, we were all in our homes and uh, uh, we were hearing about uh, people falling sick and, you know, going into the ventilate, being admitted in ICUs, people being put on ventilators and all that. So at that time, there was uh, some people we knew, like personally, uh, who were also put on ventilators. Okay. So one of those brothers, he recovered. He recovered and is very fit and fine now. 
he's fit and fine so we were talking about him and uh, how you know the church prayed for him uh, we used to have prayers uh, from 6 am 6 to 7 am every day i think for a month of 40 days we had uh, so everyone would connect on that call and then they will post the names of the people who have covid and we would pray so at that point this particular brother his condition was really bad he was in the icu on the ventilator for so many days uh, and he was shifted from one hospital to another hospital so i mean the the situation was bad so we were just discussing how um there was a determination that he has to come out you know we want to see him well uh, and the way people were praying prayer groups were praying uh, and also i'm sure the way pastor ministered also to him and his family uh, it was amazing it was amazing at any point it was easy for us to think that okay he he won't make it because so many people are not making it right uh, so maybe he won't make it but i remember the kind of passion that people carried they were praying hard they were just going after no he'll come out he'll come out and then we were hearing news also sometimes it was encouraging sometimes it was not encouraging uh, but that attitude to see no we've got to see this person well we can't give up that desire because if god's word says there's healing then there is healing we want it okay i feel like that is so key when we say faith somewhere um faith is there but then the desire you know we we are very light about it god does it so okay if he doesn't do it's okay but when we look at scripture like going back to the canaanite woman example or uh, you know the time this particular brother's healing that i can recall there was a strong desire there was a strong will people were not ready to give up they were all going after it and saying lord he has to live he has to live he recovered he is very well now he, you know so uh, it's amazing but it's amazing to see that someone who went on the ventilator and so many days and all that all those stories is back now almost normal i mean he is normal and then he's going about his work and his family life normally but it was possible okay uh, but that kind of desire so now when i hear that people are sick i'm really challenged how should i pray for them you know how should i feel for them how sh- what kind of desire i need to have as a pastor like i want to see them well so what are the things that i have to do to uh, see people recover okay so that strong desire which is of course rooted in faith will drive us to do things maybe you know call them up pray with the family visit them pray with them um, share scriptures with them fast for that family um, let our, our prayer teams know you know you need to pray but it it is connected in that strong desire if there's no strong desire you know we'll just quote some scriptures here and there pray a little bit here and there and if they recover they recover if they don't recover yeah yeah this is a very tough condition this is how it is you know we can just give up on it but to move in the supernatural having that strong desire is something that is uh, very important okay so that's the key when we talk about faith we've got to have that strong desire and if you're lacking it uh, that is something we can pray about and say god please help me you know to come to that place and yeah <laughs> and then, yes uh, when we are listening all think it, it, when we are listening that this, this testimony and all it's all good to hear uh, so sure. so i'm i'm uh, what i want to i want to tell is in my own situation my grandfather yeah. he is also a pastor okay he founded so many churches and he is a little uh, elder person when he when he got this covid he was in ventilator so many days 30 32 days i think so he died mm. so when we are when you are telling in in your perspective like mm. it will be helpful for us to mm. to just keep this testimony in front of people and can pray and can preach people and to encourage yeah. so on that particular time mm. i mean 
what you are saying is faith everything desire everything mm. we also have correct 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 yeah on on that point of time we couldn't even uh, for some days it's 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 a very big thing in our whole family mm -hmm. we couldn't pray we couldn't tell these things we should yeah it's hard so mm. so how we have to handle the situations yeah we, i mean it's nearly 30 40 churches will be uh, praying for him correct and, correct correct yeah so um, see anand uh, i don't dismiss that there are times when we follow all the keys and the principles and still we may not see the result right like in your grandfather's case unfortunately and that's quite sad um, uh, so even when such things happen you know we we cannot compromise the truth of god's word okay the bible does say that God is a healer and uh, uh, the power of the Holy Spirit is there, the power of the word is there to bring healing. Now we've applied everything. Why was there no result? That is the answer that we don't have. Got it? But the truth or the standard of God's word remains the same, no matter what your experience. You had a different experience. Someone else had must have had another experience. I was sharing about you know the experience that this brother had. Now, our experiences change, but the truth can never change. So what can we tell the church? What can we tell the believers? We have to tell them the same thing only. Though it may sound boring, it's the same thing only. God's word promises us healing and deliverance and God's power. In this case, it didn't happen. We don't know why. We just have to be humble to say we don't know why. Yeah. What we are preaching, it, it's not happened to, to our life. Correct. If we are saying something means, if you are doing only, if you are being example and all, Correct. we have to follow that first and then only we have to preach. Mm -hmm. And come to this also when we are telling it, God can do these things, God can do those. So they'll know our life, what I, what had happened. Correct, correct. How to handle it. So I'm not telling, I'm not... Uh, no, no, I, I know God, exactly where you're coming from. The so situation no we faced on yeah. those days, it's true. very hard for us. That's true, that's true. Yeah, I see, I, I do understand. Okay, this is how people may evaluate and they may say, uh, when you're preaching, why isn't it happening in your case or in this situation? See, at the end of the day, we are not God, no? So we have to be humble enough. We don't have all the answers. It's as simple as that. Okay. Um, I've heard there's, there was a, a, a preacher. Um, I forget the name of the preacher, but his daughter um, had a um, hearing problem. And uh, this particular person was used as a healing minister. Wherever he went, people were getting healed. So somebody taunted him and asked him, you are ministering healing to the whole world. Look at your daughter. She can't hear. She, she uses a hearing aid. Why can't you heal her? Okay. Give me an answer to this question. So apparently he told the, the person who asked the question, you first answer me, why was Elisha bald? You give me the answer to that question, then I'll give you the answer to my... Why was Elisha bald? See, the prophet Elisha, he had a double anointing and he moved in double miracles, right? But he couldn't grow hair on his head. How do you explain that? <laughs> See, that's I, I think he put it in a nice witty way because we don't have all the answers just because miracles happen in our lives. You know, uh, who are we to, I mean, like uh, there are so many things like even John G. Lake, um, a healing minister, when you see he experienced like he, even in his own family, he saw his own wife, uh, right? She was overworked because of the ministry and uh, uh, she passed away, something like that. So then how do you explain? You're ministering healing to the whole world, but this is happening in your own house. See, we are not God. We don't have all the answers. Like even like I can share personally from my own life also. There are things that have happened which I cannot in my head. I don't have an answer. I don't know how. Uh, after you do whatever is right, it didn't work out. 
isn't it like in terms of healing i'm talking my own family situations uh but it doesn't stop it doesn't interfere with my faith today i be, i believe the same i believe the same i believe god the same way because the truth doesn't change i know my experience i cannot uh, share my experience to prove the truth truth to you i don't know what went wrong i just accept it i don't know that's it sometimes we just have to be okay with not knowing all the answers anand that's all yeah i i don't know if that's an answer to your question but uh, it, does it help okay fine okay yeah question uh -huh. you know what in your in this supernatural thing i'll i make a timetable and i plan and i come if i finish this if i fin then only i can finish the course but uh, anyway continue we'll see <laughs> okay. uh, like uh, as we are talking about this strong desire root in mm. faith we want to pray and uh, like uh, and when we see it's not happening like uh, Mm. as we have spoken about some even minister mm. healing ministers when we see what we are praying for or especially healing for our beloved ones when it doesn't happen yeah. uh, like like uh, for me it's like desire like having faith and praying to god is something like we are fully giving our heart and uh, mm. not seeing it actually breaks correct and uh, so how uh, to uh, handle those situation for us like and keep our faith constant like mm. when even seeing not happen okay. it breaks our heart but how to uh, not to put down our faith but to have the same constant faith mm. and uh, desire yeah yeah so for that i think we need to be like very clear about what we believe and very clear about what the word says so just keep revisiting the word okay uh, and make yourself strong in in those things um so yeah I, i won't make my answer long at least I, i keep it short so yeah do that revisit the word and be strong in the truth and second is just reflect on what could have been done better yes our experience did not match up to the truth what what is it that i didn't do correct there so then try to correct yourself the next time you're ministering or the next time you're believing god Uh, along those lines so that's what i try to do maybe i didn't do that and maybe i didn't do enough declaration or prayer or i don't know you know so i just the next time i minister i just try to up myself in those areas maybe fasting yeah okay i i'll do fasting something like that just correct yourself um reflect correct yourself and hopefully there'll be a change yeah Okay, next question. Pass <laughs> how do you respond to someone like if they ask this question uh, uh like God has promised us healing, God is the healer. And why didn't he do this? I mm. mean, does that mean I mean, we know God is the promise keeper, but then Yes. Why like what can we say to them? Yeah, why didn't he do it? Okay. See, um this goes back to our understanding that though god has created us uh, he has he has given us full authority here on the earth even when it comes to healing um god can heal right like without us having faith also he can heal but there is something that he expects from us okay so what i'm trying to say is there are many factors which are on our side so we can't fully uh, state god as responsible for the failure god is the healer his word says he is the healer but why didn't healing happen because there could be one out of all the different factors which are on our side which did not really match up so that's the real answer actually that's the real answer so when people ask why didn't god do it i mean if they are the kind who will understand then you can share that god has given us responsibility to stand in faith and there are so many other things right uh, which maybe something may have been missed out we don't know because of which it actually didn't happen but if they are not the kind who uh, if they don't understand all these things you can simply say um 
why didn't this happen? Why didn't healing happen when God says he's the healer? You can just say, sometimes we just don't have all the answers and leave it at that. Yeah. Okay. So does that answer your question? Hmm. Yeah. See, there can be so many things, right? Like uh, uh, the faith of the person ministering, the faith of the person receiving ministry, maybe open doors uh, that were never shut earlier, some strongholds uh, that they have not dealt with, generational curses that people have not. There are so many reasons. Some, uh, you know, un, um, some uh, hidden sins. Uh, many things are there maybe wrong declarations. There are so many factors. We may have prayed and ministered properly, but we don't know which one. And even if everything was done right, we don't know like where exactly the thing went wrong. So uh, that only God would know. Okay. So yeah, I, I don't think in some cases, yes, we can point out and say exactly this may have gone wrong. But in many cases, we may not get a hold of that point. That's what I'm saying. Uh, you know, that's the unknown. Yeah. No. So I did not say that we should point it out. I'm just giving an explanation to our batch here who are studying about the supernatural that there are various factors. That's my point. Okay. Uh, now we are not, see, we, one thing that we should never do is, let's say healing doesn't come or deliverance doesn't come to say your faith was not good enough to anyone. We should never do that because that's not Christ-like. We are condemning the people whom we are ministering to. So don't do that for our understanding because it's a theological question. I'm giving you the answer for that. I'm saying there are many factors why these things don't come through. Okay. And in some cases, we may not even know what is that factor. But then like get up, try again. That's all. That's all I know. <laughs> That's all I'm teaching you. Just get up and try again because God's word has not changed. No, because of my experience. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, just reflect on it. See if you get an answer. If you do know what to do differently the next time, just try doing it differently. That's all. Yeah. Anything? Yeah, I think uh, Francis has a question. Okay, so I, I'll see what I can do um, in. Is it? When does he have his class? Tuesday and Thursday. Okay, let me just check because I should be there at that time. If I have another class, then I can't. So anyway, I'll see. I'll see. Yes, uh, Francis. So it's like, uh, so if you are giving this answer, Maybe it will affect on their beliefs on God. So how mm. to handle that situation? Mm. Like mm. recently only happened on, I know one person, he prayed for on uh, cousin. She got the healing starting, mm. uh, but she died. Mm -hmm. So he's asking, I know God is good and all, but ways happened to my, my life. Mm. And it's like a... It's a yeah. form of unbelief is happening. So how to handle that? Correct, problem? correct. So see... In that moment, he needs to be encouraged in God's word, right? So that's what I'm trying to explain to all of you. The answer that I gave is for all of you. Don't tell the people the answer that I'm giving you. When somebody comes to you like this, why did this happen? Why did this happen in my life? Why didn't God? At that time, you say, see, God has not changed. Um, uh, why it happened? We don't know. Just leave it at that. Why it happened? We don't know. Uh, but... God's word is the same. He will continue to, you know, minister healing in your life. Don't give up. So you go on that encouraging mode because that is the truth. That is the truth. Okay. But 
for our understanding there could have been many factors or maybe one particular factor that didn't really uh, work out which is why it didn't come through okay fine is that okay can i move on okay i have your permission okay anyone online also please feel free if you have any questions so we are talking about faith and a strong desire but even when we do have a strong desire sometimes you know we see contrary um uh, outcomes but don't be moved by it you know get up and keep going again okay uh, now talking about faith it's because when we talk about uh, the keys to the supernatural we are talking about supernatural ministry that we can involve in now supernatural ministry is only by faith okay uh, the manifestation of the power of god is only by faith so we cannot start off in faith and then uh, somewhere you know move into just doing things in the natural that won't work out so throughout our ministry we must keep ourselves strong in faith because that's when we'll be able to minister got it so maybe we started journeying with someone in faith ministering to them somewhere midway when things seem hard things seem difficult don't switch oh, oh man my you know faith flew off like a bird from my heart <laughs> nothing is left don't don't do that you started in faith journey in faith keep ministering in faith okay so keeping our faith strong is very important so galatians 3 verse 3 uh, if someone is at that passage you may read it out it's a word to the galatians where paul is encouraging the encouraging them to continue in faith okay what does it say are you so foolish having begun in the spirit are you now being made perfect by the flesh okay so uh when the galatians were trying to switch right from faith to the flesh that's where uh, paul was trying to tell them that why are you now shifting to works you started with faith you continue in faith so even when we are ministering it's but natural for us also to struggle from time to time with uh, uh, questions doubts confusion but uh, as long as we are in the word we'll be very strong okay so um, strengthen yourself in the word with regard to healing so every now and then we have that publication right like uh, healing ministering healing and deliverance yeah so i i really uh, i mean i and i love the initial part of it there is a biblical foundations for healing so i've gone through that a couple of times because in my own head i need to be clear only then my faith can be strong so i've gone through it a couple of times personally not to minister to anyone else for my own sake and there are you know certain healing ministers whose word i find uh, quite balanced so um, i listen to them again and again many times i i that's just part of my uh, spiritual strengthening so whenever i find time over and above my my quiet time my devotions and all i'll just listen to those sermons again and again and again just to keep myself strong in hey this is the word my experience can be different things but this is the word the word never changes so um keep yourself strong in faith you start in faith journey in faith yes there will be times where uh, we'll be struggling with some questions and doubts but those are the moments where we have to overcome those doubts and move on in faith okay uh, so yeah that's that's very key especially when we are ministering um the supernatural okay to people now um okay then coming to the next point i'm going by your notes uh, it says establish people in the word so that they can receive by faith okay so this again is very important uh, we know that where does faith come from hearing the word of god so if we want a continuous flow of faith we must show people the source source is the word so as long as people have the word 
see what happens is when we talk about the word of god we'll come to it but briefly for now um i can minister by my faith where you know i'm just calling people uh, and laying hands on them and commanding healing over their bodies it works because that's uh, you can do ministry like that but what if i'm gone what if people are only depending on the sunday services or you know whenever the meetings happen that's not that's not um giving them access right to the power of god but if i teach them the word of god then they are rooted and grounded in that word so whether pastor is there or pastor is not there whether pastor calls out the condition or pastor doesn't call out the condition they are strong in the word that yes what does the word say what did god introduce himself as he said covenant name i am jehovah rafa the god who heals you so they will receive the uh, the healing or the breakthrough from the word because they are already established in the word so that is another way that we can we can uh, help keep faith strong in ourselves as well as in people teach them the word teach them the word okay and when they depend on the word breakthroughs will come uh miracles will take place because they they got the ultimate source and they are anchored in it and faith will come from the word of god i don't know if you've uh, thought about this but generally right like we have this uh, this sunday known as supernatural sunday okay and uh, we have testimonies every time but particularly supernatural sundays uh what happens is first the word is preached about healing about miracles about all of that and then we ask people to believe it's so much more easier for people when they've heard the word that yeah okay and then suddenly you have more testimonies maybe i don't know definitely you have testimonies all the time but people share more testimonies yeah i prayed pastor asked to you know lay your hands on your self on that part where you're you're not well and then i got healed uh, so once you equip them with the word right then faith faith will be there and through faith you can receive got it so that's another way to minister just build them up in the in the word uh, and that way they will be able to receive from god okay next uh, we can teach people how to receive by faith now uh, we we know that in the book of hebrews right hebrews uh, 612 if somebody is there would you like to read it 6 and verse 12 that you do not become sluggish but imitate those who through faith and patience inherit the promises yeah so one of the aspects regarding faith is that you must also walk in patience isn't it faith and patience so there are matters where we see immediate results but then definitely there are matters where we have to journey with people for a while uh to see the manifestation and those are the challenging uh that that is the challenging ministry where instantly it hasn't happened right and then um people will go through ups and downs as far as their faith is concerned then how can we help them in that period uh another key aspect which we must uh guide people with is to be patient see we are praying right we are praying we are um, uh, declaring the word we we are fasting we are doing everything we know to do and just hold on don't give up be patient because it is through faith and patience that we inherit the promises of god so uh, to teach them that have faith in god but sometimes you got to have faith for a while <laughs> right before you can actually see the results everything is not instantaneous okay uh, at least that's how it is in practicality so patience is another aspect that we must um equip them with then guiding them how to really walk by faith because uh, in some situations 
to receive the supernatural it will be a journey so maybe you know they have the promise of god in that uh, particular uh, regarding that matter now uh, the journey may take a period of time so abraham is a good example for us i think in your course um, faith you must have learned about the steps of abraham how abraham received a promise from god and against all odds right he believed uh, so how how is it that they can believe in god what does the word of god say then uh, we we see how abraham uh, you know he he did not waver he did not waver he just built his faith so strong in god that even when doubts and all came at that point he was firm in his faith right and then we also see how he gave thanks to god gave glory to god and he was strengthened in his faith so these are all the steps of abraham which we can teach them and say look you can journey in this way make your faith strong in god and then uh, bring yourself to a place where truly in yourself you're convinced that this is what god wants and this is what god will do and you know praise god thank god and then eventually you will receive the promise the way abraham received so um see instant results is a part of the bible we see god jesus ministering like that only okay but there are certain promises uh, which may take time and for those uh, we must equip the people to understand how faith works there is that aspect of patience also there is that aspect of journeying with god like abraham okay we can't just say oh i prayed it didn't happen forget it god doesn't hear prayer and i come up with my own new theology that is what is dangerous okay so journey is is uh, something that we must consider and help people so uh, even though god is sovereign that god can do everything he does ask for faith uh, and we've seen that in our faith course where jesus did according to your faith as you desire isn't it so jesus was responding on the basis of faith that mark chapter 5 is a good uh, example because so many people were touching jesus but only one person received the miracle why what is the difference desire faith that jesus can do this for me okay so touching god with faith will bring the results yes god can do for everyone isn't it he can do but still jesus was checking okay you like you know faithometer if there's something like that like thermometer how much faith do you have so even when the blind man came to jesus what do you want me to do for you it's like hello jesus he's blind okay what would he want he would want to see why are you asking because he's checking the faithometer like do you believe that i can heal you and the blind man says yes jesus i want i want to see okay fine let me do this for you so if there is faith then god was responding and that teaches us that though god can do everything he still normally normally this is how he works show me your faith you show me your faith take your miracle so god is looking for faith if it was not important Jesus would not have taught so much about faith isn't it like have faith in god anyone if you, uh, you believe you don't doubt in your heart and you say to this mountain be uh, you know uh, uprooted cast into this it will happen why why is jesus talking about all this because he wants us to see the importance of faith and have faith only when we have faith god will work but yes there are times when independent of faith remember we had that discussion and the dead man lazarus and where is his faith and all but there are exceptions in some situations even though there is no faith god may still do that's his that's his kindness and his graciousness yeah his sovereignty yeah but uh, otherwise usually there's got to be faith for god to work 
and that is why when it comes to the keys to supernatural ministry we are talking about faith we need to ensure that we are walking in strong faith um and yeah continue to uh, teach people to extend their faith in god um, to supernatural encounters of god's presence and anointing so what this means is see we can teach people to have faith in god journey um, patiently in faith with god like abraham um, then uh, understand that it's the norm faith is the norm exception is where even without faith god may work but to also have faith in god um uh you know in his presence and his anointing so we'll come to presence and anointing later but briefly right now what it means is when we teach people about the things that can happen in the presence of god okay so there are many things that can happen in god's presence like for uh, like people come in to worship and they are you know supernaturally healed um they come in i i've heard this one testimony where um, someone went into a, a worship service and um, during the worship worship is going on nobody has called out any name nothing but when worship is going on apparently they felt heat on their uh, body uh, and they thought that somebody has poured hot coffee or something on them okay so they just turned around and looked like who is this why have you poured some hot drink on me but there was no one they just felt a heat and uh, the part of the body which was affected they had pain and some major issues uh, but by the time the service got over the person was healed nobody said anything nobody did anything nobody touched nothing just coming into the presence of god when we teach people hey when you come together in prayer when there is god's presence uh, miracles can happen just have faith so even when people walk in to our meetings or gatherings or worship services they can just take their miracles and go because we are teaching them to believe in the power of the presence of god similarly anointing anointing is nothing but you know um, it, it's the presence of the the spirit of god but operational through someone okay so uh, somebody is ministering uh, and uh, that when they are ministering the manifestation of the gifts of the spirit the power of god and they put their faith in that and they are able to receive it and you know miracles take place so uh, when we say people need to have faith it's both ways me as a minister of god and the listener okay so that is why we equip the listener in the word uh, in the teachings in all these things uh, knowledge about the presence anointing how to receive from it how to pray how to get so equip but having said that uh, i feel the most important thing is as a minister my faith o meter should be like just booming and overflowing right because whether somebody has faith or not i can i don't know i can't tell but if i am carrying faith i am walking in faith every day i can keep ministering right i can keep ministering powerfully so um faith is a is a key right for us to operate in the supernatural so we must keep, build up our own faith where is that going to come from that personal time in the word personal time in worship prayer that's the place from where we are going to get the faith and be strong in our faith okay so yeah any anything that you want to talk about faith let me look at the chat here if online students have anything to ask oh. yeah sure go ahead as a what do you say i mean like uh, people might okay so like um where god wanted to test abraham uh, with his son isaac because yeah. abraham loved uh isaac so much so god just wanted to test his love mm. uh for god more for his son yeah. and um and like god told isaac uh abraham to sacrifice his son and um 
But then obviously later, obviously God spares him. Mm. Then uh, I mean, people might uh, people might uh, take from that ex- as an example. Like God might uh, God took away this person from me because to test mm-hmm. and to see how I would. Yeah. So see the tests of God. Ah. Uh, So what exactly is your question? <laughs> just to just to be clear. I mean, how would we uh, respond to that? Because people might say God did the same thing, like how He tried to do. I think He's He has trying to test me, giving me a loss. Yeah. Okay, this God is, is testing my faith by giving me a loss. Okay, see, we've got to understand that. Uh, tests are from god okay but uh, don't don't equate it with temptation that leads you to sin what is temptation temptation is an inducement for sin and james very clearly says that god will not tempt god cannot tempt he doesn't tempt okay so uh, so we must really examine the situation to understand if it is re- it is a test or is it a temptation from the devil or what is it okay so if it is a test we evaluate it as a test from god one thing is for sure you know god won't do any evil so even uh, loss you're talking in the context of loss right like um, losing people god took away this person or um, you know god uh, gave this destruction but that's not the case so even even when these things happened in the life of job who did it satan did it see god is god is not um a destroyer the devil comes to steal kill and destroy so god even if you take that example of uh, you know abraham and isaac it was a test but obviously abraham didn't lose isaac God didn't take away Isaac from him. Think about this. God didn't promise him Isaac. He journeyed with God to receive Isaac and God takes away Isaac. God never did that. Okay? So, who is the one who causes loss and destruction and takes people away? It's clearly the devil. I can tell you clearly. So that's not part of God's test. God doesn't do those things. God puts us in certain situations to test our character. Uh, and test our resolve uh, and devotion to him that is a test so god tested abraham in that sense and i've also heard somebody say this and it always helps me god's tests are for promotion so whenever you clear a test from god you only go up higher in him something better comes to you he doesn't take away from you so if god has given a test the thing is you'll go higher after that if you pass you should pass <laughs> that is the important thing right some clarity yeah little bit good okay no questions on chat then shall we wrap up okay we shall do that come on let's uh, just pray Mm, let me pray today as we close heavenly father we thank you lord for giving us this time to uh, really think through um, your word and how to apply it in our lives father god thank you for the importance of faith uh, help us lord to grow in our faith oh god and uh, to be strengthened in our faith father god that lord we can uh, move and do the things that you've called us to do father right now i just pray for uh, different ones of us i pray god uh, that even in our current life situation if there be matters lord where uh, we are yearning to see Uh, your victory lord i i pray for that victory lord let that victory be released uh, into each of our lives father god yes lord thank you lord thank you that you're a prayer answering god and father we um, give you thanks we give you praise we give you all the glory and the honor in jesus name we pray
Amen. Amen. Okay. Um, thank you, everyone. God bless you. Yeah. Bye for now. Thank you. Thank you.